this class. Those those lectures are there just for you, but they're a little bit more advanced in function, and Knitter is more about R Markdown and things like that that we briefly go, have gone over. But there are a lot of great resources online for that. So generally, the, the last three lectures we'll be doing is manipulating data. Um, data, visual, data visualization and statistics, although we might switch up statistics and visualization tomorrow um, in a different order. Okay. At least HDMI cord is a little testy today. Okay. All right, so manipulating data in R. So what we'll be talking about reshaping data. So um, reshaping data from wide to long. Some people still use the terms like fat and tall. Uh, we'll be talking about reshaping data from long to wide. We'll be talking about how to merge data together. And again, perform some operations by a grouping variable, even though we've already gone over that. OK, so we will be showing you uh, how to do each operation in uh, the tidy way using dplyr and tidyr. The, there's a cheat sheet, data wrangling, uh, data wrangling cheat sheet using dplyr and tidyr. There are updated cheat sheets now on there, but this was a particularly good one that we kind of kept. Um, so, kind of what is wide or long data? So generally, I'd say a lot of people think of it this way, wide where multiple columns um, are different observations. So for example, if you have an identifier, you have a patient or something like that, you visit one, visit two, visit three, or blood pressure measurement one, blood pressure measurement two, three. They're different columns. That's what generally people think of as wide. Long, they have multiple observations, or multiple rows per observation. So here it would be like ID one, visit one, the value. So instead of it being here, and then visit two being over here, it's visit two is here, and the value is put here. I, so it's ID repeated multiple times, visit, uh, whatever visit is, and the value. Okay? This bottom way is where a lot of the functions that we talk about in tidyverse and dplyr and all that kind of stuff, it kind of assumes your data more or less is in this representation. I will say, those definitions are pretty narrow. So the way I think of data as long or wide, it's usually with respect to certain variables. So what I mean by that is, let's say you had repeated measurements where you had visit one, visit two, visit three, but then you also have three blood pressure, three blood pressure measurements where it's blood pressure measurement measure one, BP two, BP three, right? But they're different columns. So I would say it's long with respect to visits, but wide with, still with respect to blood pressure measurements. So I'm just saying long and wide are kind of general terms that are used, but I think of them with respect to a certain variable. So here we're going to be talking about the circulator data set. <clears throat> so for example, this has uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, a different date, uh, whether you got on, whether you got off, or the average of those two for the orange, purple, green, and all those lines we showed you on day one. All right, so this again, this is a Boston, Baltimore City. So it has an orange line, purple line, green line, this thing called the banner line, and this is just an average of the daily ridership. So this data can be long or wide depending on what you think. Right? Um, so for a single date, it has multiple different things, so it's wide there. But it's not just wide with respect to getting on or getting off. It's also wide with respect to these different variables, um, whether you got on or got off, and it's wide with respect to which line it is. Uh, blue, purple, or sorry, green, purple, or orange. So here, um, so we're not showing you pretty much anything new here, except this is what I generally do when I read the data set. I do a couple checks, right? So I'm just loading up this library. So I'm saying, how many have a missing date? Is that NA? Again, we'll return true if something is NA or missing. And I'm, I'm extracting the date column from this, and I'm doing the sum. It says, none of them are zero. Great. Or sorry, none of them are missing. Great. Also, just as a double check, um, depending on how the data was read in, depending, depending on how the data was maybe stored on your disk, it says, how many of them are equal to just an empty string? None of them. Great. Now, again, in read R, if you read in a data set and it has empty strings in there, by default, it will turn them as NAs. Okay? So here, I'm mutating the data set. I'm taking the data set again. I'm replacing date with its uh, month, day, year converted date dates. So now, instead of being a character string, it is now an actual date object. So we can do all those fun things like we did before. So before there was no missing values, I'm checking to make sure that after. Um, we've done this, there are no missing values either. 
So again, the uh, tidy log package will actually show you this interactively. This is how I do it kind of programmatically to check like before it was zero, after it was zero. I'm happy all, no data has been removed. So now if we look at it, again, the date, uh, uh, the date column looks a little bit different and it is in fact a date object. So we can do manipulations and mathematical operations and differences and all that fun stuff. So okay, before we go on, we're going to be talking about joins and reshaping and all that kind of stuff. The reshape command exists in R. Do not use it. It is confusing. So it tries to do too many things at once. It tries to allow you like one command to make it long to wide and wide to long simultaneously. The syntax is very confusing. I have, I'd say 99% of the time I've tried to use this command, I have not gotten the command right on the first try because the arguments are so unintuitive. So instead, we will be talking about the, these two additional functions, gather and spread. Andrew's already talked about separate and unite um, briefly, where you can take a string and separate it into multiple columns. Unite, where you can take multiple columns and paste it together into one column, um, paste those strings together. Gather is where you take multiple, you gather columns up and turn them into rows. So this is, in many respects, reshaping something from wide to long. Spread, you take observations and you spread them out into columns. Okay, I will be talking about two other functions that have been added in the past year called pivot wide and pivot long. Um, but more or less, these two I would say is a little bit more intuitive for me. But if you come from the pivot world, it might make more sense to you for the other ones. Okay, so again, gather, we're gathering up columns, putting it as rows. So the syntax for that, again, like all the other tidy functions, all the dplyr functions, the first argument is the data. So we're gathering up this data set, okay? So the second arguments are key and value. So key is saying, you're gonna take up columns and you're gonna put it in rows. Well, the value, I'm gonna take the actual values and put them in there, right? That makes sense for what the value argument is. What do you want to call the, the, column, the new column I make where the actual data went? Now you also need to know which column it came from. Excuse me? So, um, so you can name it the unit. So this could be like people. In this case, I just wrote number, right? But in this case, these are people getting on, people getting off. But I'm just saying, it's saying, what do you want to call that column? What do you want, not, so not the unit of measurement necessarily, but I'm saying like, what did this number before actually mean? Or not mean, but like, what do you want to call this? So this is 877, what do you want to call that in the new data set? Because you're going to take all those columns and put them into a new column. So the value is this. Value is itself, exactly. So that's what we map that to, but, it, but we also have to know which column did this come from? That's the key, okay? So value, what do you want to call this new, new uh, column that actually has the data in there? And then key saying, which column did it come from? Okay, so before it was orange boardings, orange A lightings, orange average, all that kind of stuff. And then it had the number in there. So we reshape those two. So we take data set, we tell it, what do we want to call the new columns we're outputting? And then lastly, you tell it which columns do you want to gather up. This is the same way you do it in select. So either you can say, I want to gather up the orange lightings, orange boardings, purple, so on and so forth, right? He, these are the ones I want to gather up. Or alternatively, you can tell it which columns you don't want to gather up. Okay, so in this case, I'm saying gather all the columns except for day, except for date, and except for daily. Okay, so just like select, you can either select columns telling the ones you want, or you can say, these are the columns I want to drop. In this case, I'm saying, I'm not dropping them from the analysis. I'm not dropping them from the data set. I'm just saying, when you gather stuff up, leave these out of the gathering process. Okay? So what that did was, it took all the orange boardings, the lightings, all that kind of stuff, kept these three the same, and now it gathered them up. So there are now... Um, for, for example, I think we sort that on the next day. So that is an alternative way of showing it. But pretty much now for 2010, 11th of January, there's going to be many, many, many observations for that. One for orange boarding, one for orange lighting, one for purple boardings, and so on. Again, alternatively, this is the same exact operation. Same exact operation. The only difference is instead of telling it which ones do I not want to gather up, I'm explicitly telling it which ones I do want to gather up. So again, 
data set. What do I want to call the new column? What do I want to call the new column? I want to gather any columns that start with orange, start with purple, start with green, start with banner. Two different ways of doing the same thing. Just sometimes this might be more intuitive, and sometimes you might want to gather almost everything except for a few columns. Can you put multiple arguments and starts with instead of just typing starts or starts and starts? You can. Um, I believe you can pass in a vector into that. But I, I don't quote me on that. I, I, I usually do it like this. Um, but you can either uh, pass a vector in there, I believe, or you can pipe. You, you can actually put orange, pipe, purple, pipe, whatever, I believe. And it'll say this or this or this or this. Okay. So same operation done two different ways, whatever makes more sense. So now I'm just showing you. So we have this new data set. We call it long. Now I'm just showing you, I'm counting up the variable. So now banner, average of lightings, boarding screen, blah, 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 all have 1,146 observations. Okay? All right. So gather. It's the only function we've showed you so far. So let's go to the lab. We'll work on gathering up some columns and rows. So, long and short are a world of difference, but um, you just use underscore CSV. Uh, it's faster, it has better defaults, it doesn't do things that I would say most users don't want to do. Read.csv has just been around since the beginning of R, more or less, and it uh, comes with basically, you don't have to have another package to do it. So, Starting out, you use read underscore all the time because it's more intuitive. It does more what you, you think it should. Let's just say that. Sure. 
no, 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 the bank. Is everyone writing the data set? Yes, yes, okay. <coughs> Okay, so we got the data set in Y, right? Everybody's good with that? Reading the data set in. Remember, you got to put paths or links or whatever you're uh, doing. You got to put those in quotes, either single or double, qu double quotes. Now we got Y. If we run that in there, if we run this, we see it was parsed. We read it in. It gave us the specification telling us how things were read in as doubles or characters or whatever. We could view it. Just do view wide. We went to the uh, environment and click the little viewer. See a bunch of NAs here, different streets, things like that, different types of bikes. So let's reshape wide using gather. So let's call this data long. So to make the key lane type and the value the length, make sure we gather all the columns but name using minus name. Okay? So again, what we're doing is we want to gather every single one of these columns. Bike Boulevard, Bike Lane, so on and so forth, even the NA, as rows of the data set. So let's say gather. Uh, so key is lane type. Value is the length. Say minus name. So normally, like I said before, you usually got to put read, uh, click the button where you read everything else in up until this point because the Gather function is in the tidy R package. Again, if you load up tidyverse, when you start, it should be fine. So, gather, gather smart. So normally in the, in the code or in the examples I showed you, you have to put quotes around these things. I generally do that, but gather smart enough to know, if you don't put quotes around them, I know what you meant. I want those to be the column names that you create out. So okay, again, we're gathering lane type, or we're gathering all the columns but name. The key we're gonna call is lane type. The value we're gonna give is the length. And now there's gonna be a whole bunch of missing values in there because if we looked at the original data, it wasn't supposed to be there. Or there wasn't any data there to begin with, is what I'm saying. So, how can I subset the data without the missing value, lengths? How do you subset rows? Which function? 
You got select the range, filter, mutate, filter. How do I test if something is N A? N -A. Is that N A? And then the thing we want to put in there, and then we're going to use the pound, or sorry, the exclamation point to reverse it. Is that N A? It's coming up true if it's missing. And I want to say, give me everything but those. Flip it. Turns trues to falses. So, for example, um, if I did this, if I didn't do the, the exclamation point, it's going to happen. It's going to give me all the rows with every with the length the length to be missing. Not very useful, not the data we want. So we have to change the trues to falses. And now these are all the rows of the data set that don't have missing values for length. Okay? Again, alternatively, instead of saying everything but name, we could have mapped out every single column that we wanted to gather up here. Any questions before moving on? So we took columns, turned them into rows. Then many times, especially if there um, are any missing values, so this is a very common next step as to removing the missing. Did NA.RM equals true? NA.RM equals true in gather. So NA.RM is an argument in that. Um, I tend to do the operations myself in case uh, I usually do some checking, but that should remove any of the NAs from the column that you create. So you can do that as well. So you say NA.RM equals true. Say so view long, look at any of the lengths, they're all there. But sometimes some things happen where if you do the conversion, um, I want to do some checking on that, but that's a good point. All right, let's go back to the lecture. <clears throat> so now we got this long data set. And we have the lengths in there, or sorry, this is sorry, jumping back to the circulator data set. Now we got people coming on, coming off, all that kind of stuff. Now we got these values for people coming on, people coming off, the average of the two. And now, what I want to do is I want a column that eventually, I want a column that's just like, which line is it? The banner line, the green line, the purple line, and so forth. And what type of data is it? Is it people getting on? Or sorry, people getting off, the average of the two of people getting on. So right now, I'm gonna all I'm doing in this command is I am taking this this column bar and I'm at, uh, replacing anytime it sees board with a capital B, I want you to put an <coughs> underscore board. Anytime you see a light, it's underscore light, average, underscore average. So now all these rows of this data set, instead of before, you saw green boardings, green average, things like that you actually just see an underscore between them. That's all we're doing. We're replacing, anytime we see board, a light, or average, we put an underscore between them because then we're going to separate this column into two separate columns. So now, and again, we saved, we saved our changes because we reassigned the variable, and now we take uh, our long data set and we throw it into the separate command. So we're separating uh, in the long data set, this column bar, and what are we going to separate it into? Again, we're going to separate uh, the first element into a column called line, the second element into a column called type, and we're going to explicitly tell it the separator is underscore. So if there were other things in there like dashes or slashes or whatever that might it might interpret as uh, separators, we say don't try to guess, I'm going to explicitly tell you underscore. So now, by default, it also removes the column that you have there is an argument to keep it, but pretty much it removes the var column, and now we have two separate columns of line and type. Okay? So, yeah? Excuse me? The last part. So if you, if you didn't do the replacement, then you try it. So uh, the question is, what is it going to try to separate separate on, right?
it can it can um let me see so So, if I do, so I didn't do the step where I replaced anything. So let's look at long real quick. Right, we have orange boardings, nothing separating between two. I don't tell it the separator. Doesn't do anything. It doesn't guess. So if you look at separate, So th this really weird thing it has in here, this carrot alpha num thing. So pretty much it's saying anything that's not alphanumeric, anything that's not a number, I'm gonna get I'm gonna guess that that's the separator. Okay? So that's why it's smart enough to know if you have underscores or periods or things like that, it's gonna be like, I'm pretty sure that's the separator. Normally I would say I'd want, want to be more explicit, and that's why we need to do this step. That's why we need to do the previous step. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything if it just if it guesses. And if we put underscore and there's no underscores, it's not going to separate anything. So now we have line, which if we look at the unique ones of those, and again we're grabbing this column. So long dollar sign line, uh, dollar sign line. It's like we have orange, purple, green, and banner. And the types are people getting on, people or sorry, people getting on, people getting off, and the average of the two. So now. We're almost there, but like this, this number means different things for different rows. It means people getting on or people getting off. So I want to reshape the data again so that I have a column for boardings, a column for people getting off, and a column for average. So we're going to do that with uh, the spread function. Sorry. So we're still working on the data, and I, I just want to reiterate, even though um, I, I don't know if Andrew talked about paste. But there is the opposite function of separating to separate. Is the, op the opposite of separate is to unite, right? So if we wanted to reverse this operation or something like that, or if we had a bunch of columns we wanted to paste together, we could say unite again. First argument is the data set. What is the new column we want to create? And then what are the things you want to unite together? And how do you want to separate them? So we could have put a period. We could have put a slash. We could have put like a whole bunch of things in there. Um, and then if you just look at it, it would have given the exact same thing. Um, you could perform the same operation with mutate um, and paste. So you could have said mutate var equals paste, you know, line, underscore, type, things like that. So paste and paste zero are a little bit more flexible and they work in any kind of capacity for vectors and all that kind of stuff. Unite and separate are specifically for um, data sets. So now we've separated the data. We have columns where we have the things we want. Eventually, we're going to spread the data out into our final product. But we want to go reiterate the separating unite function. So let's go to that second part of the lab. Thank you. 
So everybody's writing crash and road, right? So really briefly, I want you to just take a look at them. So if you go into your environment, you should be able to see crash and road. You should be able to click this. So let's look at the crash data set. We got these are crashes on how much on how many cars are kind of in this uh, on this road. How many crashes from year to year? We have Interstate 65, Interstate 70, US 40, US 36, Interstate 275. And if we look at the roads, this is much shorter. This is just information on the two roads, or five roads. All right, so let's go over number four. So let's replace any hyphens with a space in the road column of crash. Call this crash two and table the road variable. So again, we're going to take our, our data set crash. We're going to pipe it into uh, mutate if we're going to use it in str replace. If we're using string replace on a column, we're going to use mutate because we're going to replace road equal to the replaced version of road. Right? And so all the string R functions, str replace, str trim, str whatever, all of them have the first argument as the, uh, the column that you want to use. Just like dplyr stuff. First argument is the column you want to uh, do any string manipulation on. So here we're going to str replace. We're going to replace any dashes with spaces. So here... Table crash two road. Could have done it that way, or crash two. We say count road. Whatever makes more sense to you. Gives us there are 22 observations for every single road. What we see now before was US-36 and US-40. Now it's US space. So Separating and uniting, you could have done these things. Let's take the crash data set. I was doing the road data set. But you could separate the data with no, you don't tell any separator. You say crash, separate road into type and number. And you do the same thing. Tail. Ah, it's hard to see. So pretty much uh, for Interstate 65, US 40, 
So let me just use the road data set because it's going to be a little easier because there's fewer observations. So what I'm saying is you could separate the data, right? So instead of US-40, interstate space, whatever, you could have separated the data, not told with the separator. It's going to guess anytime I see a hyphen, and anytime I see a space, I think you want to split that stuff. So instead, from before the road, we split it into the type of road and the road number. Right? That's one step. And then we could have done the, the two steps together where we separate them and then unite them together with dashes. And we could have gotten road to be the same thing. So in this step, we separate them into two separate columns. Then we join them back together, call it road again, and we unite this one and this one with this separate. Two different ways to do the same operation. I would venture to say that this one's a little bit too complex to just do a string replacement, to just replace a hyphen. Um, so that's why you have something simple like replace the column anytime you see a hyphen, put a space. Again, we could have done, so actually to make it equivalent, we could have done it where instead of everything we put hyphens, everything we put spaces. Okay? So sometimes things I would say is a lot more simpler in string replace. Sometimes it may be simpler or more intuitive to you to separate the columns and then join them back together. Okay? Do those steps make sense? So in tandem, like they do the same operation, but in very, very different ways. STR replace just says, hey, you find this thing, put, in, put this other thing in there. So anytime you see a, a hyphen, put a space. You not, uh, separating uniting, especially without uh, telling it the separator, it's going to separate on a whole bunch of stuff. Right? I will say this is, um, this is totally fine, but you better make sure everything else has only two things in there. Right? Otherwise, you want to do those mer extra merge type things in here where it says, if you have more than two things, you're gonna, if you split into more, two, more than two things, put the rest somewhere else. Or put the rest at the end um, in the last column you created. Things like that. Okay? All right, let's move on to five and six.
Okay, really briefly, how many observations are in each data set? So I got n row for crash. I have about, let's see how many we got. 110 crash, crashes, uh, or maybe not crashes, it's like year, road, number of crashes. How many roads do we have? We got five roads. So really, really briefly, let's do crash. Sorry about that. Let's do count road. Let's do road. Maybe a little bigger. Road. Count road. So a couple things you should notice. The crash data set, we got I-275 in there. Right? We have, we have information on crashes from Interstate 275. Road data set, we don't have that. But in the road data set, we do have information about US 52. But we don't have any crash information on that. So again, this is sometimes how the data set is. Um, probably would be better. Uh, so sometimes, for example, you might need to do, so these are the unique identifiers that you can merge this data on. So sometimes you have to do replacements or manipulations to the identifiers so they link up, right? Remember, R is case sensitive. These have to be 100% identical. So in this case, they are. But we're just showing you ways to manipulate the data so that potentially, if they were a little bit different, and it spaces in one, dashed in the other, you could you could uh, change it. So let's separate the road column using separate into type and number and crash two. Reassign this to crash two, and table crash two dollar sign type. So again, this is very similar to what we done had done before. So um, except we're using crash two. We're separating road into type and number. Let's table crash to type interstate or US. So um, I'm going to run everything up in here again. So let's do, uh, let's look at crash to road. I just want to show you that if you put the separator, if you actually specify the separator to be something like that then this isn't going to work, right? So let's do it on crash really briefly. So crash still has the dashes 
and all that kind of stuff. So let's count type. We're gonna get a little bit of a warning here. So if we set if we specify the separator, which I would argue is probably a little bit more um, explicit. It's a little bit more safe sometimes. You don't want to maybe have it guessing what things you want to separate, right? Because many times you might have like interstate, you know, 45 dash road two or something like that. And you don't want to get have it guessing what is the separator. Sometimes, most times you want to specify it. So for example, if you had specified the separator and it was dash, but, the, but you know, for example, interstate and that kind of stuff didn't have dashes in it, you're going to get errors like this. So that's why you need to be able to manipulate and change things around using string replacement or um, things like that before you can use separate. In this case, we've already done the in crash two before we did the string replacement. So we could say separate equals space crash two. Let's count road or type. Sorry. So now we told it explicitly what the separator is, and now we and because we've changed all the hyphens to spaces, we can now do a tabulation of interstate versus US. Um, but if we had done this before with crash, for example, it wouldn't have worked because the US roads didn't have spaces in there, they had dashes. Alright. So let's create a new variable call, calling it road hyphen using the unite function. Unite the type and number columns using a hyphen and then table road hyphen. We're doing this in crash two. So let's say crash two, right? So let's view crash two before we do this. So again, type and number, right? They're two separate columns. Now we're gonna we're gonna put them together with dashes. So unite. So the arguments are the data set, which we have as the first argument. Column, what do we want to create? Col equals road hyphen. Okay. And you see by default the separator is going to be underscore. So we're going to change the separator equal to be dash. And then, for example, I, I did tell you there was this argument remove. So by default, whatever you put together, it will remove those columns. So now there's something in between. We have data, column, and then we got to tell which columns do we want to unite together. And so we want to unite the type, number columns. We could have put, um, and again, the order matters here. So if we did number then type, let's just do that to illustrate. If we did number then type, we're going to get the number first and then the type. So the order matters in which things you're uniting together. And if we table, table, sorry, table, crash two, dollar sign road hyphen, we see now that every, these are the roads again, and now they have hyphens right there. Okay, separating, uniting, separating, uniting, um, sometimes doing um, pasting, or uh, we haven't shown you really that, but that is commonly done, which you can use to mutate. So which and how many years were data collected on the crashes? So, which function would you use to get the unique years? You can use unique, so let's say crash. Um, so one way you say like unique crash year. Okay, you could also, if you're really trying to pipe that, you could say pull year and then pipe that into unique, right? Because again, unique requires a vector. Requires a vector. Um, if you do unique, sorry, it doesn't, sorry, that, that's not 100% true. Unique can work on a data set, but when you do it on a whole data set, it tries to find the unique rows, and that's not what we want. We want to take this vector and pipe it into unique to get the unique years. So we have data from 1991 to 2012. Okay. Distinct is almost is uh, pretty much the exact same thing as unique. Um, so distinct, I don't think that works on vectors though. Might have to double check me on that. So distinct doesn't work on vectors. Unique does, but you can also run unique on a data set. Distinct is specifically for data sets. Okay. 
Um, and then, for example, if you had this, we could do the same thing, but now wrap it in length. So it'll tell us we have 22 years worth of data. Or, and I guess we could have piped it to tell it, yes, we have 22 years worth of data. So what this does is it takes the data set, puts in the first argument of pull, and it says, give me that year, takes that result, which is a vector, pipes in the unique is the first argument, pipes that result into length. That's all it's done. Yeah. As opposed to this, I would probably do this. But if, it, if this makes more intuitive sense, um, yeah, N neither one is, I would say, preferable over the other. Okay. So now we finally got our data set the way we want it. So we have the data set where we have different lines, different people getting on. So let's go back really quick to refresh. I don't want any of that stuff. I want this. So long is now separated. We have a column for the line, column for the type. Now we are doing one step where we filter if there's any missing days, even though there shouldn't be any. And then we're calling that Y. And now we're taking that data set or the long data set and we're spreading out type and number. So spread takes in a data set. Remember, it's your first argument. That's what we're doing pipe here. It's saying, what is the column that you want to spread out as a new column? So what I mean by that, if we go back to type, oops, sorry. If you go to type, it's orange, green, purple, whatever. Oh, sorry, type. And that's the line. Type is boarding, people getting off, people getting on. Okay? So spread, the first uh, column argument it takes is saying, what do you want to spread out to be the new column names? So in this case, type, and then what do you want to fill in in those data points? Which column do you want to use to fill in the actual data? Okay? So if we look at spread, the help file, again, the question mark, we allow you to search help. So again, the two arguments are key and value, similar to gather. And in this case, it's asking what column is the key column. In this, in this case, it's the type. That is what takes the records and turns them into columns. And then it says, what do you want to fill in there? What is the actual value? In this case, number. So for example, on Friday, 2010, uh, so January 15, 2010, the boundary line, the green line, the purple line, we're not running. The only line that was running is the orange line. Okay? So it spread it out uh, for each day, um, all of these three different observations. So now this column means people getting off. This means the average of the two. This means people getting on. Right? So they mean the same thing. So we've now spread something that was long before out of Y. Okay? So again, gather and spread do kind of reciprocal operations. But you might not have spread the data. We could have spread the data um, with respect to line. We could have a column that says banner, green, orange, purple. I would say that might make sense, but that might not make as much sense as this. Right? We, we wanted to spread it so that a column of people getting on, a column of people getting on, getting off in the average, we wanted different columns for that. We could have spread line out. And it would have a column for purple, green, orange, banner, and so on. But we have replicates for people getting on, people getting off. So I'm saying, again, this data is now long with respect to the, the line. It is wide with respect to what kind of data is in there, the people getting on, people getting off. Okay, so let's spread some data in part three.
Uh, let's go through part three. So we're using the bike data set here. So again, you could just use bike equals read, J-H-U-R, read bike, or we could have read underscore CSV. Uh, we've gone through that pretty consistently throughout, so hopefully reading data in with CSVs is pretty straightforward now. So now we're going to uh, keep the rows where the record is not missing type and not missing name and reassign the output to bike. So again, if we're keeping rows based on some criteria, I'm using filter. All right, filter. So I want to say not is dot na type. Okay, that is only going to give me uh, records though that it's not missing type. 
I want it to be not missing type and not missing name. So again, we'd use the ampersand for the and operation. So I didn't reassign it yet, so we can actually see these columns now will have every record will have name and type in here. But if we looked at bike, some of them have missing names, some of them have missing types later in here. So now we can subset the data where we have only those records. So again, is that NA? Gives us true if it's missing. We turn it to the opposite because we want it not to be missing and it not to be missing for name. So jointly, uh, we'll only have records that have a type and have a name. Okay? So let's summarize and group the data by grouping name and type. And take the sum of the length variable. Call this data set sub. So we're going to call it sub. So again, the data set's bike. First things first, if you want to do summarization, you have to group the data. So we're going to group it by name and type. And then we're going to use summarize, right? Because we want to collapse everything down into the sum of the, the, the addition of all the lengths of that type of, of bike lane and type. So let's just see, um, let's do, before we do this, let's just do count. So for example, the Sharrow bike lane on Alisana Street has 19 observations in this data set, okay? So similarly, we could have said there's a another function called add count. So count summarizes the data down and gives us the same, how many records we found. Add count is kind of like mutating, where we actually add a count to the data set. So if we looked at it, there should be a column. Let me just view this. So now for every single combination of name and type, it'll append some sample size on there. Okay? So add count adds a count to the data set. Count will count it. But here, we're not doing any of that. We're going to create a summary. So we're going to summarize length equals sum length. So length is a col so we're not using the length function here. This is an actual column in this data set. So again, Hadley Wickham uh, from New Zealand, right? So you'll see a lot of S's instead of Z's, uh, depending on how you uh, write things. I use S for summarize because it doesn't conflict with some other packages that have the summarize function with a Z. Um, but you can choose summarize with a Z, summarize with an S. When we talk about visualization tomorrow, you can specify color with a U or not a U, depending on your preference. So that's why there's a lot of functions with Z's and S's and different spellings using the, the British English or um, US. Okay, so we look at this. We see now, again, the summary. So now this is adding up all those bike lane lengths from those different, uh, so from the, those unique combinations of name and type. Okay? So we group the data, summarize. So now, again, we have um, name, type, length. Now we're going to reshape the data. Okay. So uh, we are going to spread out the um, type of lane into separate columns. Okay. So I want a column for bike lane. I want for shower, for all the other ones. So I'm going to spread, right? So again, the first argument is always the data. So spread the data where the key is type. So we're going to say key is type. And then the value we want to put into the actual cells is the length column. I'm going to call this data y. So again, we see a lot of NAs, things like that. Um, this is actually the original data we had read in from the beginning of the lecture. Um, this is how we created it. So it's saying on Argonne Street, let's see a couple where it might have more than one. 
So for example, on Cross Country Boulevard, there is 260 to 2,642 feet of uh, bike lanes that are designated as a type of bike lane, and there's 400 or 1,496 feet of bike lanes that are described as shallows. I don't know what ty different types of bike lanes there are in there, but also, just to be clear with uh, some of the data, so we're going to show you uh, how to, let's quick plot length, data equals bike, let's do bins equals 100, 100 different bins. So if you look at that, you should see some bike lanes have a length of zero, which doesn't make much sense. It's not a bike lane if it doesn't have any length. So um, yeah, this data is a little bit messy, so we'd want to do some changes before kind of doing an analysis on this. All right. This section is going to be relatively brief. We're talking about joins. How do you merge data? We have four or five functions that we're going to talk about. They're, I would say, relatively straightforward, um, relatively uh, similar in the way they operate. Um, so here we're going to give you a very uh, toy data set as, a, as an illustrative example. Base is just going to be a data set where we have 10, observa 10 IDs, so 10 patient IDs or whatever. We have the age for each one of those people. And the IDs are from 1 to 10. Okay, So 10 people showed up at baseline, got their age measured, like we recorded their age. Visits has IDs 1 to 8. IDs 1 to 8 showed up, and they had some outcome measure, but this new person came in, ID 11. Okay, each one of them had three visits. Okay, so for some reason, 9 and 10, they didn't come back, they withdrew, something like that, but it just so happened 11 missed its baseline visit, but it had data in the visits data set. So baseline baseline data, only one record, 1 to 10. Visits data set, it has repeated measures, for um, for people, uh, so multiple visits, and it has some outcome measure. So um, merging and joining data sets uh, is, works on a set of key variables. They have to ide be identical to match up. Uh, if you look at the, if you do question mark join, you'll see all the different types of joins in dplyr. Uh, these are the ones we'll really cover. Inner join, right? Uh, when you join two things up, it keeps the records where X and Y match up. Everything else where they don't match, it's gone. Left uh, Full join, if you're in X and you're in Y, you're going to be in this resulting join. Okay? And what I mean by that is like, if you, so if that record uh, 11, right, it wasn't in the baseline data, doesn't matter. If you're in either data set, you're coming out in a full join. The inner join, it's only where, if we're joining on ID, it's only records where they're in baseline and follow-up. Left join and right join are almost identical, except it, it, uh, the order of the arguments really matters. A left join, X is your le left or master data set. Y is the data set you're merging into. So pretty much, if you do a left join, whatever data set you put in X, every single row of X will be kept. If things um, that are in, in Y that you don't want, but the ones that do match will match up, anything that is in Y but not X will be dropped away. Right join, sim same, same idea, you just switch which one is like your master data set. Right? right join, Y is the same thing as I talked about with a left join with X. So okay, here I'm joining, inner, uh, I'm doing inner join of baseline of visits. I did not specify what we're joining on. If you don't specify anything, it's going to look through all the columns of the first data set and all the columns of the data, second data set and say which ones match up. Oh, you have an ID in this one, you have an ID in this one, you want to join on ID. If you had an ID and five other columns that were the exact same names, it's going to assume you're going to try to join on all of them. So here, we have 24 records and four observations. If we look at the data set of the inner join, we see uh, records 9 and 10 are gone, right, because they were only in baseline. Record 11 is gone because it was only in visits. Pretty much only in the inner join, only things that match up are contained. Left join. So in this case, baseline is our kind of master data set we're joining in the visits. So it's a different number of rows. We have 26 rows now. And we see even though rec uh, IDs 9 and 10 did not have any visit level data, they were kept in that data set because we said this is a left join and base 
Base is our, is our master data set, and we said, even if you don't have any adjoining records and visits, make sure we keep all the records in, in this case, X or base. That make sense? All right, again, the tidy log package gives you a lot more information. So if you load up the tidy log package, right, it showed you the things that happen when you mutate. It's, I think, a lot more useful for things when you do joins. So this is the exact same thing we did before, except we, we loaded up the tidy log package. So what it does is it joins the data set, but now it says how many rows are only in X, how many rows are only in Y, how many rows are in the final data set or in the, that are matched, and how, how many of them are in the output. Okay? This isn't necessarily recorded anywhere. It's just a message for you to say where things are. It doesn't have a merge variable like Stata. It doesn't work in the same way. So here we're doing a right join. So exact same argument order. Right? So now visits is the master data set. So we see now records 9 and 10 were gone because they are not in the visits data set. And this is a right join. But record 11 is kept in there because now our master data set is visits. Okay? If you switch the arguments around, right join, the second argument to your master, this is exactly the same thing. This is exactly the same thing as doing a left join and switching the arguments around. I tend to not use right join. I tend to use left join for most, most of my stuff. But it just allows you to specify things in a different order. Full join. If you're in either one of them, you're staying. Okay? Full join, records 9, 10, 11. Even though you had no visit data for 9 and 10, you're in here. In baseline, even though you had no baseline measurement for 11, you're in here. Full join, everything stays. Um, really briefly, there's a function called duplicated, which works on vectors, um, which gives you a true when it finds the first duplication. So uh, students have asked about this. Where can you find duplicated things like that? This doesn't work on like an entire rows and things like that. That's why things like distinct and unique are useful because if you want to drop everything where everything is exactly equal, you can just say distinct or unique on the data set and it'll drop out rows where everything is identical. If there's any slight difference though, it will keep it. So duplicated is one way you can find the first duplication of something like IDs or something. So there are there are other joins like anti joins which don't like what doesn't match up is one of them um, and I will say so the argument that we haven't used but you should probably use explicitly is the by argument that's where you give a character vector of the columns you want to join upon so let's say you had two data sets one had ID one had age the other one had ID and age and outcome and so on and so forth if you don't tell it anything it's going to try to join on ID and age. Right? If they don't match up, the one's like NA over here, it's going to give you, a, if you do a full join, it's going to give you a, a new record. If you do an inner join, it's going to drop stuff out. Right? And in some cases, <clears throat> you might say by ID, but they both have an age column. And so what it's going to do is actually add suffixes to those column names. So, um... Let's, okay, so remember the crash data set and the road data set, okay? The only variable they have in common is road. But let's say I said road mutate volume is some, is 10,000, something like that. If I join full join road and crash, it's going to try to join on road and volume. It's like, oh no, that's not what I want. Volume, it's not supposed to match up. But you say by road, so you specify exactly which columns. So that the equivalent of that, the equivalent of what we just did was this. All right, so this is how you specify which columns you're joining on. But if we say, actually, you know what? You're just supposed to be joining on road. You should see now there is a volume.x and a volume.y. Okay? 
So if you merge and they have the same name, but you're so if two cop if, sorry two data sets have the same name, but you're not merging on that thing, it's going to say, hey, you probably want to keep both of them. So I'm going to say road district by volume dot x x refers to road because again it depends on which order you put these in, and volume dot y corresponds to crash. So you can compare those in that way, for example. It's a situation where you would want I mean, um, ID and date, like, like something like that where you you have something like that. Your name's Dan, my name's Dan. You wouldn't want to do that just first name. Yeah, first name, last name. Yeah, it's where the the unique identifiers are more than one, but they don't necessarily make sense to be kind of pasted together into one thing. So if you did first name, last name, or something like that, but like site. So let let's say you had site one a, a bunch of times. ID one two three four five. You don't just want to merge on ID. You want to merge on site and ID, right? For a new data set because ID one means different things at different sites or different hospitals or something like that. So um, try to be a little bit more. I mean, I know every obviously this class is very rushed, um, but uh, we try to do a lot more labs. So we're gonna um, have. We're going to say, do the lab, come back with questions tomorrow, because we're going to start with st statistics tomorrow morning. Um, don't know if they have course evals. The evaluation people are being a little bit, apparently we had uh, this year enable evaluations or something like that. So we should have them up by the, hopefully at the end of the day, and they should send you an email. Um, so again, right, uh, I, will, I, I, I try to always reiterate, I know it's the end of class, I try to always reiterate that like, it's been four days, but you have learned a lot of verbs and nouns and things that you haven't on Monday, um, where now you know how to change data sets, transform them, reshape them, merge them together. And so you got a lot of the tools. Obviously, you're not going to be super comfortable with them out of the gate, but you should have a lot of the skills that really a standard data analysis needs. All right. Make sure to shoot us any emails if you have any questions. Yeah. We'll talk about the final project the first thing tomorrow morning. So we kind of assume, especially the audience of this class usually, is that you usually